Hi everyone, welcome to the afternoon session of the Community.O Summit. Our next speaker is Jubi Taneja. Jubi is a PhD candidate at the University of Utah. She's currently wrapping up her work on super optimizers, program correctness and other static analysis techniques and plans to start working full-time at Microsoft Research in the machine learning compiler team from summer this year. In her short career, Juby has presented at various conferences, has been a part of several program committees, and has volunteered at many and inclusion events. I deeply admire Juby for her grit in overcoming obstacles, candidness in sharing her experiences, and a deep-rooted desire to give back to the community. Before we hear from Juby, here are a few housekeeping items. Please use the Q&A feature, uh, see at the top uh, right corner of the screen, mm -hmm. to ask questions. Uh, Juby will answer these questions at the end of the talk, and we'll have some time, about 15 minutes after the uh, talk and Q&A, to network with the speaker and other attendees. So um, stay back after the conference. All right. Now let's hear from Juby. Her talk is titled, you're not alone, chasing the journey of learning and belonging. Thank you, Anupama. Thank you so much for this lovely introduction. All right, I hope we are all settled in. Let's just begin. Have you experienced the fear to ask questions, the fear of being judged by the people you know, that moment in your life when you start doubting all the capabilities that you have, you just doubt yourself constantly all the time and your confidence hits the rock bottom. And then with all the struggles that you make, you want to make a progress in your life. You want to feel better and reach at some level. And just when you reach that level, the imposter syndrome kicks in. It makes you question again, like, am I capable enough? Am I worth it? Have I done all by myself? Or can I do it? Can I repeat this moment of success again in my life altogether? So these kind of questions, these feelings are so real with everyone. I hope most of you out there can relate to this feeling. Well, I also had the same experiences for a very long time, for several years. So. Let me make you feel all very comfortable with this one thing that we all share these feelings together. So remember that you are not alone. Hello, everyone. I'm Juby Taneja. I am I come from a very small town, Rajpura. It's located in the northern part of India. That's my beautiful family. And this is a view from my home balcony. Yeah. So in this talk today, I'll be sharing my learning journey, the time when I started to chase this journey of learning compilers. What were the questions that made me learn this topic, you know, and chase it for like a decade now? And while I was going to, you know, answer all these questions, like what is compiler or how this particular thing is designed and so on, during this process of learning, the most important realization that occurred to me was that indeed I was chasing this part of belonging somewhere, belonging to a particular community where I can feel comfortable with people around me. And hence, this talk today is about my journey of learning and belonging. So during my first year of undergrad, while I was learning to code in C, but beforehand in my school days also when I was a teenager and even before I started to program, but there was no goal in mind, like what is happening and what not. But while I was learning C in my undergraduate program, the main question that caught my interest there was that what is happening behind the scenes when I build and run my code? Obviously, the term that I got to know was that it is a compiler which is compiling my program. And now, finally, once I have my executable, I can run it. But the chase just didn't stop there. The learning just didn't stop there. I wanted to go beyond it and find out what the compiler is or what is the potential of a compiler, how they are designed, or what all can I play around with a given compiler. 
So the obvious undergrad student technique was that I wanted to look into my program of study to find out, okay, is there any course that is being offered at my school? To my surprise, there was no course. Completely okay. I wanted to find out if there is any instructor available in my school to teach me compilers independently, but there was no instructor as well. So the obvious last choice for me was I wanted to look around for resources or books around me in the library or in the bookstores, but there were no books as well. Well, does it mean like, you know, should I stop at that moment? The happiness in me was that I at least have something to chase after, unlike some other people who were still figuring out what is, you know, making them more exciting about this whole computer science undergraduate degree program. But I had, a, you know, at least one question to chase after, which was about compilers. So obviously, I didn't stop. I moved past that single, you know, set of barriers, not just a single barrier, but a set of them. So the first thing that I did was, besides just reaching out to my faculty within the school, I started approaching people outside my school in several IITs in India. So at that time, I was writing them an email and asking like, OK, this is you know so far my experience, but these are the questions that I want to understand and answer them. So can you please help me learn about compilers at my end, maybe if you have any summer projects or something, can I please work with you? I got very lucky when one of the professors from IIT Bombay, you know, replied back to me and he was happy that I want to learn compilers, even though I don't have any resources around me. So he replied back with this one book, like, why don't you start learning from this book titled Lex and Yak? This will give you a good idea of designing a interpreter, like a small calculator, maybe. So I followed this book, just like my you know spiritual guide, and I stick onto it to learn every single thing. So that's when I wrote down my first interpreter using this book, Lex and Yak. So that was great. I was asking questions, and I was so happy to see how generous you know one person can be towards somebody, even they were willing to help me remotely through just email conversations. So this continued on and off for like years while I was learning slowly and slowly about how to write the front end of a compiler. It ended up into an internship opportunity. And that's when I flew from my small town to IIT Bombay eventually. And there I was working in GCC Resource Center at IIT Bombay. I got to work with so many amazing people out there. I had this opportunity to write my first compiler in this group. And once I was you know, learning to write down the compiler, a toy compiler, I also got the opportunity to learn the GCC internals. And that's when I started to actually see how a production compiler can be designed. I got to learn the different IRs that were there in the GCC compiler, how the passes are structured, how the optimizations are designed, how the data flow analysis are designed in it, and so on. There were so many things from front end to the back end of a compiler that were so fascinating. So it was like a lot of information, but in a very guided way, because there were so many people around to help me. So what really worked at that time was, Yes, definitely, I learned a lot. I felt that technical and personal growth in me. And second, I felt that I have a community where I belong. I felt at comfort with this whole group. That was all great. Now I was ready to move into the industry. And once I entered into the industry, there, I was working on a very little tiny piece of a compiler, not very much, because the main focus of the team where I was a part of was to work on the kernels or on the drivers or linkers and loaders kind of stuff. So there, I overheard this discussion from a group of people in my company, and they were talking about you know different compilers, like how one compiler can be more performance efficient than the other and so on. So that was just like you know my moment. And I had my question ready. 
like okay if given this kind of a system where x compiler is not working giving you a good performance can i replace x compiler by the y compiler infrastructure so in this case x was gcc and y was the llvm compiler so that was my next question which i wanted to chase down but obviously having a very little knowledge of gcc and now i was very fascinated to learn more about llvm as well so the obvious set of questions for me were what is llvm first of all what is the architecture of llvm how is llvm different from gcc and how is it related to gcc and there were so many unknown questions that i just didn't know what to ask or what to look for so there were a lot of dots that i had to connect so i started from llvm.org obviously and i started to go through the documentation of it and finally stumbled upon this master's thesis by chris lackner so i was like okay now this is my next guide that i have to go through to understand what is this all about yes there were things you know while i was reading it i could make sense of which were easy to grasp but i read it reread it and re re reread it but you know there were a lot of things that were just going on top of my head because i was not mature enough to understand what i have to learn and how i have to learn it so you know i chased my learning for a while but in between i got my admit from university of utah to start my phd program and there i was traveling from new delhi to salt lake city utah and finally i was there in the gorgeous campus of university of utah now after spending a year into my phd program and figuring out what to work and what not to work you know now i came across this amazing blog by my advisor john rigger who wrote about designing an llvm super optimizer now once i start i you know came across this whole cool idea i was least bothered about understanding the optimization part or the super optimization part for me the biggest fascination was llvm in it now i was so happy and so thrilled that okay this is the time when i can actually learn llvm the right way there will be someone to help me guide me chase this whole learning of llvm infrastructure great you know that's where i got to start my learning of llvm so i started with the tutorials and learned to write down small passes and so on started digging into the language reference manual to understand the semantics of individual instructions and to chase down the whole source code of llvm i also took support of doxygen documentation because i was so lost in between to make connections between different classes and how these things are structured and so on but all of this information was so overwhelming and i found myself that i was stuck in little problems now i wanted to answer questions you know as little as what is the llvm value what are the different types that are supported here or you know how to cast a certain type to a different type and so on so these were like the very very basic questions from where you know i found myself stuck and i wanted to answer them and while i was solving these technical issues to learn to program i lost the bigger picture of the whole thing and that's when you know the question reluctance came in me my advisor was the only person to help me so on one side i should have been the most happiest person that okay the whole attention of my advisor and the time of him is all for me but you know somehow i just started judging myself and self doubting myself in such a way that i thought if i have got an admission into the phd program i am supposed to answer these questions of my own i am the one who has to take care of things individually and not ask my advisor for all these little you know stupid questions because they sounded very very stupid to me like how can i go back with these things you know back and forth to my advisor even though he was so willing to help me so it was a fear in me a bad judgment about myself that i stopped asking the questions because i could not figure out how to ask and what to ask exactly so 
Eventually, I was losing my overall motivation during that time. And finally, you know, I kind of sat down and thought, like, I need people just like me. And that time, I guess I was looking for more companions in my lab, maybe more companions in my department, in my school who were working in compilers. I was looking for more women at that time. And I wanted to get over this whole isolation phase. And, you know, as we always think, whenever in life we come across a lack of something, that's when it occurs to us. And when we reflect on our past, we think about the times when we had an abundance of something. And we start to realize and connect the dots at that time, like, oh, this was abundant in my life at that particular stage. And that's why, you know, something good happened. Yes, I'm talking about that time when I actually entered into my first research internship and first research fellowship thereafter. I had a bigger group. I felt that technical and personal growth in that group because there were so many people around me to support me. So it was not only, you know, one particular advisor who was there to answer my questions, but rather as a group, all the students were learning together. They were struggling together and there was a sense of belonging and no one was isolated at that time. So I started to appreciate that. And, you know, thereafter, I knew that, okay, this particular feeling made me so happy. So yes, now is the time that I have to make or take the baby steps towards making some progress in my life. So the first thing that I obviously did was to improve my knowledge and to understand the advanced concepts of compiler, I took the course on advanced compilers in my school. So I took like a couple of those courses offered through different professors at different times. And yes, it helped me understand and grasp the concepts in a much better way. And then I started to go out because now I also needed a community. I needed people with whom I can relate. So I started attending more programming languages conferences. But to my surprise, I think my eyes were rolling around in those conferences to spot those women undergrad or grad students there in the conferences also, but there were very few. But still, it was comforting to have at least some people on your side. And then I also chased down the conference level, like I wanted to attend some women-specific conferences. So I looked up and came across this women-specific conference called CRO, and they used to host like every year a grad cohort. So I attended that conference as well. And I was very psyched about this one particular event that they were hosting one day, which was a roundtable discussion. And all these roundtables were structured according to the area of research. And I was so happy that today I will be meeting a lot of compiler women in this event. But to my surprise again, or maybe a shock, like out of 500 attendees in this conference, there was only single one table where six of us were sitting who shared this common area of interest or area of research as in the compilers. Well, it's still okay to not be the only one out of 500, but to be six out of 500. Great. And in the end of that year, I learned about that there is LABM developers meeting also that I can attend. So there I was attending my first LLVM dev meeting. And that's me with Chris Lackner and Tanya Lackner. I was so happy to be a part of this amazing, amazing conference because now there were 500 attendees out there who were working in and around LLVM. And even a lot of them were new to the LLVM community, new to the whole LLVM learning. So at least 500 of them, you know, were sharing the same goal of learning and talking about LLVM learnings. So there was a lot of progress that I made during this conference. One is, yes, I made my whole plan very clear that I want to attend XYZ talks. I want to attend the student research competition talks. I attended the roundtable discussions. 
But the most amazing sessions or most helpful sessions for me were the poster sessions and the lightning talks. Poster sessions were the one, you know, where I could feel so much comfortable going and talking to people. I could interact with them one on one, ask them the basic questions like, OK, can you please go back to, to the introduction first? Or can you please explain me the background of this topic that you are portraying as a poster? So people were so nice to explain a lot of things to build a good background for me, like why they were doing it or how they are doing it. I used to ask them these kind of questions like, oh, what was a ma major challenge for you to you know, come up with this idea or implement this idea and so on. So those kind of you know, discussions with the community, when I ask them questions, it helped me understand that I am not alone struggling with a lot of technical challenges to learn something. But everyone does that. And people move past their barriers once they chase down their journey of learning and asking questions. So that was a very, very great experience for me as a first LLVM dev at the first LLVM dev meeting. So definitely a lot of learning happened at that time. And a year later, I came back as a presenter in the student research competition where I presented my ongoing research in LLVM's data flow analysis. Now, a couple of great things happened at that time. One is when I submitted my proposal, I was very nervous, even though I had my advisor by my side who reviewed my proposal, who you know encouraged me like, OK, I'm ready to go there and talk about my work, even though it's an ongoing research. But the feedback that I got from the reviewers was very, very helpful. They gave me insights on how or what they're expecting me to talk about while I come there to present my work. So I knew the kind of things to do I had to finish you know, before I come there to present my work. And second was, during the conference, in the Q&A session, there were so many interesting questions. And in the hallway discussions and in, in the banquet dinner, people came you know, and asked me questions. So even when I used to go and meet people, tell them like, OK, you know, today this work or maybe I'm going to present this work during this dev meeting, come and stop by while I'm talking about my work. And if you have any questions, any perspectives, please share with me. So those perspectives help a lot to understand how your research can be useful for someone or it may not be. So you learn different perspectives. And also at this time in the second dev meeting when I met or when I was networking with people, I met people from previous year also, you know, and at that time it felt like I'm building that bond with these people. And it gave me the feeling or the sense of belonging to this community from my second dev meeting itself. And years later, you know, every year my group was also growing at that time. The top left corner is my advisor and my lab mate. And we all used to come together in these conferences, hang out and learn together a lot of things. So everything was, you know, moving towards a positive direction. And I started to see the bigger picture again by now. Earlier, when I was losing my bigger picture because I was stuck in the smaller pieces and I didn't know how to put them together. But now I could take a step back and see the bigger picture of things. And this really helped me understand and see for myself that what is the next step of my research that I want to chase down. And finally, this bigger picture thing, the new ideas made me understand what is my next project. And it ended up into an internship opportunity at Mozilla. That's the group of friends with whom I was working in Mozilla at that time. Now, with the help of one community, which is the LLVM community, I got to transition into a different community. During my internship, I was working in the Rust programming language for the first time. Earlier, all my experience was in C++. Now, the transition from LLVM to the Rust community was so good. And also, transitioning from one compiler infrastructure to the another was so easy because there was a huge community support to help me. I was ready to ask questions because I knew my experiences from past when I stopped asking questions. And it just took me 
way down in my confidence and in my progress and now because of a lot of people around me while we were all learning together there were good study groups you know led by great rust programmers among the students also who were leading that who were willing to help a lot now at this time i knew okay this is the overall idea of my project and my mentor helped me so much during my internship period he used to give me a lot of feedback on every single step that i would come up with and finally with this whole clarity of bigger and the smaller goals that i had i finally presented my work at the end of my internship on super optimizing crane lift and eventually this work got transitioned into my dissertation thesis as well now after these many years of you know going through a lot of struggling time isolation period and taking baby steps to feel better it occurred to me like now all the conferences that i want to attend or all the events where i am willing to go there and earlier my only passion to attend these events was to learn from people but now i wanted to go back and give back to the community as well because it is this community who has given me a lot and now i decided to make my little contributions besides just lines of code or something but rather i made sure like thereafter whenever i would go back to any conferences i would talk to the new attendees in that conference because yes people are very shy to talk of their own when they are new to any events because the world changes for them they hide in the corners so i would go and talk to them to make them more comfortable so that they can open up about their questions and second i also started to volunteer myself to review the proposals research papers artifacts and so on but the most important thing that i started to do at that time was to talk about my own experiences and when i learned about this mentorship program conducted by sig plan mentorship i never had imagined that a phd student while doing their phd can ever become a mentor as well so while i registered myself to be a mentee because i needed more mentorship on different aspects i also enrolled myself as a mentor because i knew that now i can help at least some prospective phd students maybe some undergrad or grad students or people in the industry who want to come back into academia or people who try to come from you know a different country they have a lot of immigration issues and so on so i decided to volunteer there as a mentor you won't believe i have learned a lot from my mentees once they started to open up with me with a lot of personal questions that they had the trust that they have tried to show to me and the kind of experiences that they have went through it kind of started to give me that comfort that yes in my past also i was not the only one going through it i think the problems that everyone goes through beat any gender are all similar no one is very different even if they're coming from different countries or different cultural backgrounds so this experience of mentorship has given me a lot of learnings a lot of them and i also started to volunteer with the women in compilers and tools group this group is one such amazing place for me to which i look forward every particular week where we all women five of us share the same goals and same passion to bring this community together so that there are this community becomes the llvm community becomes more diverse so that we have more women contributors also in the same community so it has been really tremendous really amazing to make these kind of contributions in giving back to the community in the end i would like to conclude with some takeaways for you all please please ask questions how so ever hard it may get for you but trust me once you come out and ask questions you will see that people are so willing to help you people are genuinely very nice it's just you who is self judging and self doubting yourself and not asking the questions 
but give them a chance as well and ask them some questions. And while you are asking is to learn something, figure out the right community for yourself. Figure out that place for yourself where you have that sense of belonging and the sense of comfort for yourself. And sometimes while you are learning something, you are stuck in very, very little issues and you tend to lose that bigger picture. And sometimes it ends up in losing your entire motivation to do something. At that time, just remind yourself to take a step back and think about the bigger picture of the things that you are doing or why you are here today. Just remember those times when you dreamed to do something like this that you are doing today. And once you know the bigger picture, try to solve them or split them into the smaller pieces and then aim towards solving this whole puzzle. Definitely do not quit. Have that perseverance to solve the problems, to chase your whole journey together. And yes, come back to the community and give back to the community in your own ways. And definitely, definitely talk about your own experiences. Before I end, you must be wondering, like today when I'm talking to you, is my fear really gone? The answer is no, I'm still afraid. Whenever I go back to the conferences, whenever go, I go back to some events, it still, you know, I have those moments when I'm like, oh, I'm still afraid. How will I go and talk to people? But it's real. You just have to address it and just break the barrier for once. And this, you know, words of wisdom from my advisor, John Riggle, helps me a lot who told me once that you only have a certain amount of fear for something in your body. Once you use that up entirely, it will be gone from you. So I think through these experiences, I'm just practicing on that note so that my fear is completely gone. I would also like to acknowledge my external mentor to whom I met through the Sick Plan Mentorship Program, and that's Christina Sifiantis. She has supported and encouraged me a lot while I was preparing this talk and even for a lot of issues that women experiences in any area, be it computer science or in the area of any, any particular area, be it the programming languages research or in terms of coming out and talking about certain things and so on. So she is a main hero behind the scenes who really helped me prepare this talk. Because once I was preparing this talk, the imposter syndrome was kicking in me again at that time. Like, can I do that? And she just made me feel comfortable this. That, like, yes, I can come out very openly and very clearly. In the end, I would like to remind you all again and emphasize that trust me, we are all in this together. You are not alone. Tomorrow, you will be the one telling someone else out there that they are not alone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Jubi. That was good to see you. Yeah. yeah, and thanks for being so open and sharing your experiences with us. We all learned something and have some blueprints to get over some of our own um, insecurities, challenges, obstacles. So thanks a lot again. And now I'd like to uh, open it up for Q&A. So mm -hmm. uh, please uh, enter your, the audience can enter their questions. The attendees can enter their questions in the uh, Q&A box and uh, Juby can um, address them for us. And just to uh, kick it off. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had a question still. So so you said that one of your initial motivations for learning about compilers was to understand what happens behind the scene. Mm -hmm. So what is your motivation today to continue to learn more about compilers? Sure. Yeah. Thank you uh, for asking this. Such a great question. So, yeah, I mean, initially, you know, as I was transitioning to learn more about what a compiler is, but now my actual learning is still happening, but I'm more concerned about making the compilers more useful in such a way so that compiler developers don't have to, let's say, implement the optimization passes manually, but rather I want to work on techniques so that people can automatically 
implement the parts of compiler. So this has been my area of research through my PhD as well, where the focus has been to use the formal methods-based techniques to implement the parts of compiler automatically. So that's something very fascinating for me. And besides just learning about compilers or making them more better, I want to enter into the interdisciplinary research where we can connect compilers with, let's say, the machine learning side of it and so on. So yeah, these are the things that fascinate me still to chase this whole learning of compilers. Cool. Thank you, Jubli. Uh, so uh, for people in the industry or even now, uh, you know, as you're heading from academia to industry, so do you have any tips for attendees on how to keep up with the latest development uh, in research uh, on compilers and other techniques? Yeah, yeah, sure. Great. So the things that have, have helped me in general, but there might be a lot of things that uh, you know are outside my own reach that I don't know yet, but I'll share from my own experiences. The first good thing that people can do to keep themselves updated is definitely read a lot of papers. You know, and finding out papers is through attending conferences. Or if you have missed attending any conferences, at least look out for what are the papers that came out this year or what were in the previous years and so on. So once you keep track of what papers are coming out, it will help you understand like how the research is, you know, taking its own direction now. And once you have one paper in your hand, you read like one, two, three, four, five papers. You go back into the reference sections and find out like, okay, this is the, another exciting paper. So basically, you know, you start connecting all the dots from the past to the present and so on. Definitely go back to the events, attend a lot of conferences, look out for a lot of research papers. And the good part about learning the trends in LLVM is just watch out for the LLVM weekly digest that comes every Monday. Just look for like what is happening, what was happening in the past week, and so on. It'll it'll help you a lot to navigate the whole search better. Cool. Okay, so we have uh, another audience question here. Can you tell us more about how the mentor program worked? How are mentor mentees matched, and how could this be extended to open source communities? Yeah, sure. Great. Uh, thanks for asking this question. So this mentorship program is uh, the one that I spoke about is particularly run by the SIGPLAN mentorship. So if you just Google about it, you can find that they have a link in, uh, embedded in the website where they ask you to register yourself as a mentee or as a mentor because they are looking for both mentors and mentees. So there are there's a huge team behind the scene of the SIGPLAN mentorship, you will find out the names of the whole people as well who are conducting or organizing this whole program. So you enter in the kind of questions or the kind of things that you're looking for to seek help and the things that you can help with as a mentor. So people behind the scenes who are trying to help you match the mentors and mentees they are the ones who would come back to you and let you know like, okay, hey, we have matched you up with this particular mentor or this mentor is matched to this mentee. So we give them a chance uh, to just take a look, like are you comfortable talking to this particular person that we have come up with? And if you are comfortable, your match is done and you can now take the conversation all between two people, not with anybody else, and you can talk about the things that you need help with or you can help someone with. Uh, and talking about extending it to the open source program, I think that's a very great idea. Uh, I, I, I think I have seen this kind of a mentorship program in the Rust community also, but I'm not aware of any other mentorship programs talking of the open source uh, communities. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure if there are any, but there must be some if you look around. Uh, but for the LLVM, I think it would be a very good idea if we can start to have more mentorship programs to help beginners or any other people in the community. I think that's a great suggestion and the right time for us to start something like that. Cool. OK, um, one more question is, uh, 
So, so on the other end, so we spoke about, you know, how you keep up with the latest developments. Uh, on the other end, for a newbie entering the field, mm -hmm. uh, you know, of, you know, compilers and programming languages, uh, where do you recommend that they start? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, once you start learning, uh, for me today, uh, I have to really sit down and think like, okay, there are a lot of things that one has to do. So first, one is, if someone is very new to the whole concept of compilers, one, the first advice that I would want to give is that I have seen in a lot of people is when they hear about the term compiler, they just get so afraid, like it is so complicated. Trust me, it's just another tool or another program. So just take away that concept from your mind, like it's certain challenge. But to start from somewhere, I think it is important to start with the overall idea of what you're going to learn. So first start with some, let's say, YouTube tutorials on learning compilers. Maybe you can take this nano pass structure to design a compiler where you know, you'd start with a small language and parse the whole language itself and boil down to different IRs and so on. So I think going through some basic courses of compiler is the first step. And then you can go into the advanced levels of learning, you know, specific compilers. So that's my take. Maybe, you know, you can pick up any university's course on compilers and start learning from there. I, I have done a lot of different courses from different, different places. So I, I think a lot of things from different courses have helped me, not just one particular course. So awesome. All right, uh, I think that's all the questions that we had. Thank you so much, Judy, again, for a fantastic mm -hmm. talk. And uh, so uh, uh, we'll be signing off now and uh, Judy will be available um, to answer more questions in the networking uh, part of the session. Thanks, everybody. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Anupama.